Live Jerome Party Studio. Live Jerome Harden Studio. Live from Jerome Harden Studios. This is the last of my discast. I will say about so you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll see you later. What's up on JR? You sure alright? Let's get started. Live from Jerome Harden Studios. This is the latest on my update that I'm willing to tell you about. So you sit back, relax, chillax, and I'll tell you the latest. Hello, my name is Jerome J. Harden, founder and graphic designer of Jerome Harden Studios. So today is December 7th, 2021. And guess what today is? Today is also my birthday. I am 29 years old now. And if you guys wish me a happy birthday, I really appreciate it. And I'll leave the name of my cash app so you can bless me with some money for my cash app. So, all right, enough of that. The reason I'm making this video is because I'm going to be talking about price and inflation. And this video is very helpful for some of you on why uh, everything has been going up, including rent, grocery, gas prices, electricity bills, outings. All that stuff because food has been going up uh rent has been going up and i've been hearing on the news that electricity is supposed to be going up because of this uh crazy winter pandemic and you know the reason that everything's been going crazy and going up because of this corona fire pandemic it has affected everything which means people be getting their checks people be quitting their jobs people want to hire wages people are short-handed that's the reason everything's going up. So, um, yeah, that was the main reason that I'm going to be talking about this newscast because this is very important. This is what we need to talk about right now because some of you, I understand some of you are frustrated, but believe me, once you get done with this, watching this video, trust me, you'll understand everything that has been going on. Um, extreme weather, um, like, you know, you know, farmers been using machinery to operate stuff like food processing plants. You know, people be, uh, the company's been shorthanded too. So, um, and you know, you need gas and fuel to, you know, to operate tractors, you know, to process your crops and all that stuff. You know, that's the reason that everything's been going up. So, um, and then we're going to talk about rent too, uh, because rent is, um, you know, rent's been going up for where, around where I live. Back then, um, rent is hasn't been super crazy uh, back then, but right now it has skyrocketed uh, not like never before because you know, you know where I live at right now, which is in Huntsville, Alabama, and you know if you uh, visited Huntsville or you don't know what Huntsville, Alabama is all about, you know. If you know what I'm talking about, you know, there's a lot of traffic, you know, a lot of storage being built, a lot of housing being built, you know, and, you know, a lot of people are down moving in uh, because of this Red Star Arsenal stuff, um, you know, the military stuff, um, you know, the high security jobs can pay well. So, uh, you know, these kinds of people will pay top dollar for expensive cars, expensive home, even expensive apartments around downtown Huntsville. So, yeah, that's the the reason that, you know, everything's been skyrocketing lately. You know, that like saying that the middle class um doesn't exist anymore. You know, people are trying to make a decent living, trying to survive, uh accommodate those prices, but you know, people have to change their budgets because, you know, everything's been going up lately. So if you go to the grocery store and you see like apple juice is 118 now it's 208 so if you go to a grocery store you see that meat's going up everything's been going up so this is not a joke here you know 2021 you know the 2020 the decade so far is not looking good for us because everything's going up people dying you know people are already lost their job trying to people uh, companies trying to get people to come back to work i mean it's crazy so um yeah and why I'm uh, going to be explaining uh, why everything's been going up, uh, why are the probable causes. And the probable causes are extreme weather, global warming, shortages, and of course, COVID-19. And uh, really, and I'm going to be explaining each purpose, uh, crops, 
food sources won't grow right because of this extreme weather. And of course, shortage, shortages of workers, of companies that are trying to find workers. And I've been overhearing that companies are just about hiring anybody off the streets and they don't know what they're doing and firing them right off the bat because, you know, people are too lazy and they can't find the right candidate. So, of course, companies are having a hard time keeping workers as well. And high demand, high demand of uh, certain products is... Another reason why prices have been going up, um, including gas prices. So, yeah, so that's a lot of stuff I'm going to be talking about. And, you know, and I hope you sit back and enjoy this newscast because it's going to be all right, folks. Let me tell you, because whew, 2020 has been a wild ride. And if you haven't been through 2020 or 2021 yet, just wait till 2022 what brings you. So. Yes, just sit back, relax, enjoy this newscast, and yeah. All right, so um, the price of inflation. Okay, so what I'm going to be talking about is uh, global warming, which is also the possibility of the blame for why prices have been going up. So, you know, the gas emissions and the weather gets too hot or cold which damage crops, it damages everything. Like, I've been watching the news like sometime over the summer and um, sometimes air conditioners can wear out, which is going to be a very miserable um, time in the household. Or if it um, the air conditioning unit or the heating unit wears out, which is extremely cold. And you know, when uh, electricity goes out due to overpowering or overheating you always have to have a backup source like sometimes natural heating sources such as coal fireplaces i mean all that stuff can help but you know if you don't have any of that then you're just going to have to wait till electricity comes back on or you know something like that happens because um i think earlier this year somewhere around texas when people well um thousands or millions of people somewhere in Texas are without power and stuff. You know, people have had to live through it, through the cold. And I think the temperatures are around freezing at that time. And people, some people froze to death. Um, and, you know, the governor um, and didn't care. He was on vacation at the time and he couldn't help his people because he was on vacation. So shame on him. And I'm feeling sorry for the people that had to experience that. And um, around here in Huntsville, we do have extreme weather too, um, extreme cold, extreme hot weather. And, you know, it's just like um, if for some reason that extreme weather gets here, because sometimes Huntsville, Alabama has snow too. Let's not forget that. And we had a white Christmas back in 2010. So anything can happen around Huntsville, Alabama. And, you know, if it gets to a point where everything gets too cold, the electricity gets interrupted because this cold weather, the extreme weather, and our governor couldn't help us. I mean, who is to blame? The governor? Our people? What happened? I mean, Mother Nature can be to blame too? There are so many questions that um, are going to be left unanswered because people are going to be blaming the governor, people are going to be blaming the mayor, people can blame about anything because, you know, it's crazy. People just, you know, assume that, you know, it's, you know, everything's, uh, so it's somebody's fault because, you know, none of these people are prepared for what's worse to come. So, and, um, you know, the reason behind grass pricing being so high, um, earlier in the news that there had been cyber hacking and gas shortages, high demand, um, and, you know, COVID, too, because, you know, remember, people be quitting their jobs on on oil refineries, too. So let's not forget that. And, you know, what we just talked about, gas and electricity bills are going up, too, later this winter. So I hope you guys are prepared for that. And uh, mention that, you know, when uh, back in the past, you know, everything's been fairly steady, but, you know, 
Let's not forget, uh, this isn't the first time gas prices have been going up over $3, sometimes $4. And out in the West Coast, such as California, Washington State, and Oregon, some places are even $5 as of right now. But thank God, um, where I live now, prices are starting to go back down. And, um, you know, over the years that, you know, when the decades uh, roll around, you know, everything has changed. Um, you know, prices has been changing over the decades. And I had a glimpse of a price list uh, back in 1938 where everything has been a super cheap back then because uh, really uh, back in 1938, there wasn't much technology. Uh, I think most TV sets don't exist around households and um, yeah, I mean, there wasn't too much technology back in 1938, and that's the main reason why everything's been super cheap now. Now, if you can um, look at that picture um, displayed on your screen right now, you can see that, you know, um, everything's been cheap, such as eggs, you know, like a new car is like uh, under $3,000, really. So, um, I mean, that's pretty cheap right there, or... I mean, it's pretty expensive to some of the, um, some of some of the people because you know minimum wage is always seven twenty five. Um, it was it was uh, minimum wage. I think back in nineteen thirty eight is twenty two cents. I don't know, but I have to look it up and make sure. But um, anyways, um, uh, it's just like um, all the prices you see here is comparable to today today's dollar. So um. Yeah, don't think that everything's cheap back then because it's just um, equal equal or what we're spending today. So let's not forget that. Don't think it's super cheap because, you know, it's just a price and inflation on what's happening right now. So don't blame 2021. Don't blame the 1970s. It just changed over the decades because people, it's new technology is coming in, you know, a lot of stuff being invented. And, you know, it's just, you know... Uh, I think the U.S. and the Earth is getting more and more advanced. That's why everything's been going up lately. So, um, yeah. And, uh, and I will leave the links below of what I've been talking about, um, such as the decline of the American worker. I will leave a description below the, uh, the video. Um, also, uh, I will also leave the link for, um, uh, why about stimulus checks also uh, the stimulus checks are another reason uh, of why uh, of the or why people be quitting their jobs price and inflation shorthanded workers something like that and we got to talk about rent too uh, rent has been going up for around where I live and people are getting evicted because people lost their jobs people are waiting their money people aren't getting their jobs People aren't going to work. People are too lazy and they cry because, you know, they can't pay rent because people can't don't want to go to work. I mean, it's crazy because, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos of people getting evicted and people are complaining. People are crying because they're on the streets. And a matter of fact, I will show you a couple of videos of people getting evicted and another one um why everything's been going up so um i'll present you two videos and i'll see you back in when i when you finish these videos um I, we will talk more about this topic okay all right on a recent morning in virginia dozens of people bundled up against the november chill to wait for a thanksgiving turkey the line at the arlington food assistance center was orderly and socially distanced and in the middle was Cynthia Anthony, a 73-year-old grappling with how to make ends meet. She moved through the line, Thank you. checked in, Happy. You too. greeted volunteers she's come to know over the past year she's been a regular visitor, and collected her food items. My food stamps is not enough to hold me throughout the month. $20 in food stamps don't get you nothing, and that's what I get. What did $20 a food stamp get you these days? A half a gallon of milk, a pack of hot dogs for $1.99, one loaf of bread. I might be able to get a dozen of eggs. 
If I don't, I get a half a dozen. That's where the $20 stop at. That's for a few days. I got 28 or 29 more days to go. Anthony is not alone. 55-year-old Anna Deming started coming here after she injured her wrist and couldn't work her hotel job anymore. Here, she's able to pick up the essentials. They give me tomato or some onion, potato. They say I don't have to buy. And then there's 23-year-old Jax Garnett, a military spouse and mom of five who's currently looking for work. We live on top of a Whole Foods that we can't afford to shop at. So we feel the weight of food inflation and the insecurity on us every day. A recent survey found that the pandemic made it harder for nearly one out of every three Americans to access food. And of those who responded that they had fewer financial resources, nearly half said they were eating less. You know, the minimum wage is still $7.25. Um, so that, um, that really is impossible to live on. Charles Meng is the head of the Arlington Food Assistance Center. He says since the pandemic started, there's one group they've been seeing more of. The typical profile is, is really the working poor. That's the group that changes the most. We have seen an increase uh, very significantly in that particular group. One reason, rising costs at grocery stores across the country. A dollar just doesn't go as far. A pound of ground beef is up nearly 18% over last year. Bacon is up 28%, eggs 29%. For low-income households, about a third of their total income is spent on food. So this makes it really difficult to have any, um, any margin right now for them to, to be able to feed their families. Katie Fitzgerald is the president of the nonprofit Feeding America that coordinates a network of 200 food banks nationwide. We're seeing, you know, skyrocketing transportation costs, uh, labor challenges at food banks, still challenged to get enough volunteers in. And then just the price of food itself um, is really pricing out some products that food banks otherwise would normally be procuring for their communities. At the Arlington Food Assistance Center, Director Charles Meng said they bought 2,400 turkeys to hand out ahead of Thanksgiving, but that came at a cost. Here we paid a dollar five per pound for turkeys. We're now paying a dollar, almost a uh, dollar 42. Per pound. So there's been a tremendous increase in that cost. And if you're one of our clients, you see that cost in your daily um, uh, grocery store bill. Part of what's at play in higher grocery bills begins in backed up container ships in ports around the world. A lack of truck drivers to transport goods, higher gas prices. It all adds up to sticker shock on grocery store shelves and food banks aren't immune. Another issue facing hungry America, more than 54 million Americans live in areas with poor access to healthy food. In Arlington, they've made it part of their mission to help people get more nutritious foods that often come at a higher cost into their diets. With five children, Jax Garnett says it's a big reason she started coming. Sometimes you're like, okay, I don't want to make macaroni again, even though they like that. It's not nutritious. I need substance. There's a lot of other great resources that are food drives or easy pickup options, but a lot of them don't have fruits and vegetables. So to get something fresh, to get milk, eggs, fruits and vegetables, this is one of the few opportunities in Arlington that offers that. And with a turkey in her backpack, Garnett headed off, better prepared to feed her family this Thanksgiving. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Amna Navaz in Arlington, Virginia. It's a quiet morning in San Antonio, but it's about to get loud. Constable's office, you're on a route of possession. Bear County constables are evicting a tenant who may be armed, a dangerous job that requires backup. He could be somewhere in the area, so we have to remain alert. Deputy Laura Valencia is with the constable's office. You don't have the original keys? We followed her and her team on several evictions. Despite a federal ban, evictions have continued here, but there are fewer constables to do the job. There have been over 18,000 evictions filed in Bear County since the start of the pandemic. 
They expect that number to increase by three to five times once the CDC ban is lifted in October. Does it still get tough emotionally for you to have to go and do this? The tough part is just seeing the families that you have to tell them, you know, we've given you the 24 hours to vacate already. Michelle Medina and Josh Barkley know the pain of eviction. The 28-year-old couple has six children. They were evicted two weeks after Michelle gave birth to baby Ozzy. What was going through your mind? I was scared. I was crying constantly. Josh lost his construction job due to the pandemic. He was making $18 an hour. I'm barely managing, you know, to get back on my feet. They have been living at this Salvation Army emergency shelter for the past month. Whatever the cause is, just to stick together as a family, as a unit, and, you know, to be, you know, a better family also at the end of the day. And, you know. What do you focus on to try to stay positive? My kids, you know, that's the only positive outcome that I have in my days. Their kids know money is tight, but they manage to throw a little party for their three-year-old's birthday. You want a cookie? That is what we want. We do need a house, and we are going to get one. A dream that for now only exists in a child's drawing. All right, so do you see these two videos where, you know, people are getting evicted, you know, price has been going up. So, yeah, I mean, this is not a joke, people. We have to get better on our budgets and stuff. And if you want, like, say, uh, a new car, I mean, it's going to be over $50,000 or something like that, $20,000. You have to re really get a good paying job just to afford these cards. Um, and co college too, um, do you, don't you think college will help you? Um, or do you think college will get you into debt? Um, and by the time you finish paying off your college debt, you'll probably be in your late 40s or 50s. So thinking about that, people, you know, um, at the start of your life, you go to school. And once you graduate high school, you go to college. After you graduate college, you go straight to work, and the cycle repeats itself until you get old. You go to retirement. You die. That's it. You don't get to have. You really don't get to enjoy life except for rich people, of course. And we're gonna talk about uh, celebrity life and the news guys because I have a lot of things to talk about in celebrities because you know. In the life of child stars, you know, like, you know, I think um, I'm going to be digging down into life of child stars because I've been hearing a lot of things that they, it's not a very good industry to put your child in. So, um, yeah, so, all right, back to the topics. Um, and uh, also that, you know, um, Another thing about, you know, demand on product is because, you know, people be fine order certain products and, you know, people are acting up because they're out of some stores are out of products and, you know, it takes a while to stock up because of high demand, really. So, yeah. All right. So, and, um, so I guess we covered everything we need to talk about, um, the, on the reason why price has been going up so um you know i'm doing the best that i can to explain everything to you guys so um we talk about electricity bills we talk about gas prices we talk about food prices we talk about recreation you know and you know and it's just you know we just need to get it together folks that's it all right so i think i'm going to end this newscast for there and you know just be sure to check out the links below and we'll uh, talk about that from there. So I guess this is it. So wish me a happy birthday. I'm going to enjoy my birthday. But until next time, I'm Jerome Harden, founder and graphic designer of Jerome Harden Studios. I am out. Peace.